Hello again. Uh, so today I'm going to show you these cool little uh, LED matrix, matrix devices um, that are uh, once again remarkably affordable. They're coming from some factory in China someplace. And uh, this particular one is a single color. It's red. It's an 8 by 8 array of LEDs. Um, so by the way when you get these things to attach them to the boards these do actually pop out. They are socketed. Okay. So that gives you access to the screws should you need to attach it to anything. You do want to be very, very careful putting it back in so you get your pins lined up. Um, so now I've got my LED plugged back in. And actually before I show you how to how to use this, and it's, it is really simple, we should uh, look quickly at what it actually is. Um, fortunately, Arduino already has a library built in okay so when you just install arduino you're already again going to get the led control library which uh, controls both of these chips the 7221 and the 7219 um, this device has got a 7219 in it and what a 7219 does if we look quickly down here what actually is this device this led array well here's your leds and what ultimately it means is that if I want to light up this LED, okay, I have to make this column of uh, source pins high. So I make this one high. And then I give this column here a row to go low. And that allows for a flow of electrons to go out this way. And it's the only, if, these, if it's only these two, then only this LED will light up. Likewise, I can light up both this one and this one. I shouldn't say light up. I can make these two high and make, for example, this one low. And then these two will light up. Okay, It's a really simple uh, way of expanding out capacity for your LEDs. This chip, you could, you could obviously, we could just wire it up if we want to. We don't need the, the circuit board. But uh, you know, for one of these, it wouldn't be so bad. The Teensy has plenty of I.O. pins. But when we want to add two or three or four or ten, uh, it becomes much more complicated and we simply run out of pins. That's where something like this chip comes in handy. What it does is it handles all the switching of those I.O. directions with just essentially three or four wires. Um, and then by sending out the signal we can then address it so I can have these things hooked up in series so I could have one of these, two of these, three of these, whatever and then each one would then be able to drive 64 LEDs and uh, it just makes our life so much easier. So let's go back and let's go ahead and pull up my thing here and uh, let's talk about hooking it up. If we look carefully at it, maybe I can zoom in, I'm going to set it right there uh, and zoom in. You can see, maybe when you're holding yours, actually you can see it in this video, it's pretty well labeled. We have these five pins. We've got VCC, we've got a ground pin in here someplace. There it is next to it. And then we have the data in, um, we have the CS, and we have the clock. Okay. So with those three pins plus, six, uh, plus power and ground, we can then make this guy work up. So I'm actually going to plug it in uh, to just a couple of pins. So looking at mine, VCC, power and ground are going to be green and yellow. So green is power. So I'll plug it in one of my power pins here. I'll put it right there. Oh heck, I'll put it on the, I'm going to put it, I'll leave it on that side. I'll just turn that switch on. And yellow is ground. So remember on these boards, the outer row of pins is ground, the center row is power, and then the closest row here is signal. I have this board set for 5 volts and 5 volts, so I'm going to get 5 volts when I turn on this bus over here. And now I'm going to take these three, and I'm just going to plug them into three available uh, I.O. ports. I'll choose the last three. Like this. And like this. So notice I'm putting these in the 
row of pins closest to the chip. These are the signals. Okay, excellent. All right, and I powered it up. Okay, now um, let's take a look at some code. Like I said, fortunately, Arduino already has it installed. Uh, I was running blank, so right now it's just blinking on and off periodically here. Um, and as often as the case, when it's installed, there's already a set of examples. So if we go to examples and we scroll down, we can find LED control. And then we're going to be dealing with, oh, you guys can't see this. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can scroll this up a little bit further so you guys can actually see it. LED control. And I'm interested in this case of working with a matrix. I'm actually going to close out this blink. And what we have to do is we have to, first thing is make sure we actually have it hooked up to the right set of pins. So let me grab my glasses. I'm going to turn this power off just for a moment. Okay. So my orange wire is in. Okay. Data in. So orange wire should be 12. Well, as it turns out, I'm actually, that is on pin 10. So I have to switch this appropriately. Okay. My 12, let's see, 11 is the clock. And I currently have the clock, which is the brown wire, on 12. And the CS pin is going to be the remaining one, which is 11. And I'm going to jump back over to this website here to confirm that, in fact, I've got this correct. Okay, so you can see it clearly laid out right here. All right. And if we go back to our Arduino code and our image, this should actually work. We've only got one device. Let's load it up. Okay, and we can see it is in fact working. It actually went by and scrolled all these numbers so fast we couldn't even see it. Let's go ahead now and make it something more reasonable, like 500 milliseconds. So it's going to call them up or 500 milliseconds. I'll put this in orientation. And see, well, actually, you know what? I don't think it's going to this. So. This is an interesting thing. The code, if we look at it, this test, we can see that it's actually working, which is great. Let me zoom that out a little bit. Okay. But the code is not ideal for our particular device. Okay. And we can see that here when we look at the arrays. Um, it's backwards and sideways. Okay, I mean, I'm going to probably, probably mount this guy like this. And therefore, when my alphabet comes by, which we'll see here in a moment, actually, let me go ahead and take some of this out. We, all we want to see is the alphabet go by. We'll go back up. Okay, it's backwards. It's backwards in your camera and it's backwards for me. So it's it's not an artifact. It definitely is backwards. So whatever this library was written to is is written for an array which is laid out a little bit different. But that's okay because we can build our own. And in fact, what I've done here is I will pull up mine and let me go ahead and copy this arrangement of pins. 
and put it in mine. Okay. And this particular library I have posted, and you can get to it uh, from looking below this video. And we'll load it. Actually, I'm going to pause while it's loading. Okay. So I've got some symbols, arrows, letters, all kinds of different things. And you can see those all in these different uh, modules. Okay. So, for example, this is the animation module. The first one is the splat. I've only written a couple of them so far. The next one is the spiral. The letters are here. And what I want to show you at least once is I'm actually going to fill this screen up. Okay. And it's perhaps a little difficult to understand when you see it laid out like this. But when we lay it out like this, I only reduced it to a single line to save space. Okay. All right, it's printing a capital X. Well, now you can actually see it, okay? Every time that there is a one, it's going to turn the light on, all right? So what you actually see then is the X. And keep in mind that it's actually, on this particular matrix, like this, okay? So this one right here corresponds to this uh, LED here. This one right here corresponds to this LED here. So I built it with it on its side, but it made it really fast and easy to actually write. Okay, so that is basically it. I'll actually mount one on a robot real quick and we'll end this. I'll pause it and win this video in a second. All right, so here you can see one that's been mounted on a robot. It's running this code, which I've posted. And the only other thing I want to add is um, I designed a very simple little piece that you can print on a 3D printer. If you don't have one, I can do it for you, but I have to charge you a little bit for it because it's, uh, it takes a while to print. There's just a screw that goes through both sides of these, so you can use it as a pivot. And then this will mount for example here or it'll mount on top of the motherboard and it allows you to set an angle so when my robot's running around I can have it set so that I can comfortably view it as the robot's zipping away or whatever it is or telling me which directions it's going. Okay I hope that was useful and I will see you guys again soon on another video.